On April 11th of 1974, the body of Donna Pounds was found in her West Riverside home. Now, Donna Pounds was a middle-aged lady with some children. They were in high school. And she was found in the basement of her home. She was tied and she had died of gunshot wounds to the head. The murder weapon was a gun that had been earlier taken from the house. At that time, John C. Moe was the sheriff and he was retired FBI and an extensive investigation occurred. And of course, they started interviewing everybody they could. The, fa the husband's name was Harvey Pounds. Harvey was a minister. And it was alleged that there may have been problems in their marriage. And due to that fact, they felt that Harvey was a person of interest. But also, one of the classmates of the Pounds children, a gentleman by the name of Wayne Nance, was a person of interest. When they talked to Wayne, they found in his gym bag 22 caliber ammunition that matched the same as that was used by in the murder. Also, they found a rubber glove. And that rubber glove was on a trail on the way to the Wayne Nance house. Of course, law enforcement did their darndest to figure out who did this for sure and indict the suspects. In fact, they did. there was a grand jury and that grand jury determined there was not sufficient probable cause to indict anyone for that murder at that time. That was about five years later. Now we'll have to fast forward to 1979. In 1979, we found the body of a female. She was found next to the interstate down by Beaver Tail Hill. All there was was clothing and her bodily remains. Very little evidence. In those days, there was not very good forensics to determine her identity. We went to great lengths to try and figure out who she was, but to no avail. Then in 1984, I'm sorry, 9th September of 85, we found the body of a young lady up Crystal Creek, and she was found in a shallow grave. She had died of gunshot wounds to the head. Again, very little to go on, very little information, and no identification. On Christmas Eve in 1985, another body was found. This time it was up Deer Creek. The body was decomposed. It was in a shallow grave with only a little bit of clothing there, with very little, no jewelry. By the way, she was identified this spring this spring, as Marcella Bachman, she was a runaway from Washington. Investigators worked their darndest trying to figure out who these young ladies were and who did it, with really very little success. Now we'll fast forward to September 3rd of 1986. On September 3rd, the night of, Doug Wells, lived on Parker Court in Davis Street here in Missoula. And Doug came out to take his garbage out. Well, he heard something, saw something, felt something. And here a guy come out from behind the bushes and said, I need a flashlight, I got car trouble. And Doug in his head says, well, gee whiz, I, I know this guy, I think I know him, I think he works with my wife, but it just didn't, you know, big deal. I'll go get him a flashlight. So he leads him over to the front door, opens the front door and walks in. There's a stairway going up, a stairway going down. It's a split level. And as he comes in, boom, next thing he knows, he's hit on the head. Hit, hit. And then there's a gun there, pointing at him. His wife, Chris Wells, runs out in from, the, from the bedrooms and comes out and sees what's happening. And Wayne Nance holds a gun on her. She makes her tie up her husband. Then when Wayne Nance takes her up to her bedroom and ties her to the four corners of her bed with some clothesline rope. Wells then takes her husband Doug downstairs and ties him to a post that's holding up the middle of the house in the basement. 
And after he finishes tying him, Doug Wells says, well, I'm there and I'm kind of dazed and he, he beat me and I was almost out of it and all at once, stabs him in the chest with an eight inch knife. And then he wipes the knife on his pant leg, cleans it off and puts it back in his scabbard. And he said, oh, I just got mad. I was so damn mad. He goes upstairs. Now Doug knows that he's going to murder his wife or take advantage of her or everything. Doug works his, he wasn't a very good tire, didn't do a very good job because Doug made it, got untied. He got over to his workbench. He was a gunsmith. And there on the, gun, on the workbench was a 99 Savage lever action. He put one round in it. It was 253,000 for those that care. Doug would then went upstairs. He got to the bottom of the landing where he was originally hit right inside the door. And here comes Wayne Nance. And when Wayne Nance come from that, he shot him. Hit him once right here in the side. Wayne Nance says, you killed me. Goes down and starts crawling and going towards the bedroom. Doug Wells is after him with that gun, hitting him with the gun as they're going to the bedroom. He did get to the bedroom where Chris was laying on the bed, tied up. He got the gun that he had originally used to control him and he tried to shoot Doug. Doug is trying to hit him. Doug is hitting him. He's shooting. Shoots three rounds. One round goes into Doug's leg, his knee. Another round goes into the ceiling. Another round goes in to Wayne Nance's head. Wayne Nance went unconscious, died in St. Pat's Hospital. Doug Wells was transported and he has recovered. Chris Wells was not really physically injured. Now folks, we have the opportunity to figure out who Wayne Nance is. We remember him back from the Pounds homicide. We know that the three girls, two of the girls were found just outside of East Missoula. We start looking. Guy by the name of Dale Dye, a sheriff of Valley County calls up and says, you know, I got a double murder from last year, right before Christmas. This Wayne Nance worked for Conlon Furniture. Chris Wells was the manager of Conlon Furniture. Wayne Nance had delivered furniture out there to the Shooks. Mike and Teresa were found dead in their house down in Valley County. Their four children were upstairs in the bedroom. Someone had somehow gained entrance, controlled the couple, tied them up, and murdered them. Then started to fire to the house, almost killed the four children. The four children were transported to Denver to the regional hospital down there, and they did make it. So, Mr. Dye, how are we going to figure out whether Wayne Nance did this? Well, he says, we didn't tell the public, but there was a ceramic elk missing from the house. The murderer stole that. And the murderer stole the knife. Now, this is a unique knife. Mike Shook's father had two knives made. They were Kelgan. They were consecutively serial numbered. One had gone to each one of the brothers. Mike Shook's brother and him on the previous Christmas. So, we would like you to search for that. I drew up a search warrant. Judge signed it. We went out to the house. Minnesota Street. Wayne lived with his father, but his father was a long haul trucker. He wasn't home very often. We did the search of the house. We found the ceramic elk. And a picture with Wayne Nance giving it to his, proudly giving it to his father for Christmas. We also found the consecutively serial numbered knife sitting there on the dresser. The dresser has a beautiful jewelry tree filled with jewelry. Now Wayne Nance had no girlfriends. 
we found his bed had clothesline rope tied all four as if he was ready to accept somebody. There was rubber sheets on the bed. We found pictures, a set of three Kmart photo pictures, photo map booth pictures of a young lady. George Nance said that Wayne, he was a bouncer at the cabin bar in East Missoula and he had picked this girl up. Well, this girl had been a transient. She had a runaway and she came into Missoula from Washington and she didn't have any place to stay. So Wayne let her stay at, her, at their house while George was gone. And of course, George asked him after the next trip where she was and he said, well, she just left. Well, we now know that was a young lady that we found in a shallow grave. So, did he do the shooks? Yes. Did he attempt to kill the wells? Yes. Did he almost kill four? Yes, four children. Did he two do the girls, the three girls? History will decide. Wayne Nance, did he do Donna Pounds? Again, no court is ever going to be convened to determine it. But you'll have to decide yourself, history will decide itself, his legacy. So, I thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you.